good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to the SEA Specimen Paper Series here at the Series Arts Academy. And this is the final episode in the Mathematics Specimen Paper. So here we have number 40, which is a statistics question, and it reads, five students ran 60 meter sprint races at Seaview Primary School. The time students took to complete the sprint races are shown in the table below. Based on the information given in the table above, state three reasons why an average is not a good measure to select a student to represent the school in a 60 meter sprint race and select a student to represent the school given your reason. There are a number of things going on here, right? These students, they are sprinting. They have sprinted on five occasions, right? From the first sprint to the fifth sprint. So we have some chronological order taking place here. And what you'll notice from student to student is that some of them have their times improving. Okay, so remember in a race, the shorter the time you took or the last time you took to run means that you have actually run faster, right? So Troy is improving steadily, okay? Whereas somebody like, let's say, Chris, with the very same average as Troy of 10.2, his times are getting longer. Therefore, he's running a worst 60 meter sprint than he was at the start, okay? His last race is 1.1 seconds longer than his initial sprint, whereas Troy, his final sprint is 0.4 seconds shorter than his initial sprint. So although they have the same average, the trends that indicate improvement in their running time is not being um, reflected or is not easy to ascertain from just looking at the average. We have to look at the individual sprint times as they progress to see whether improvement is being made or not. Okay, look at somebody like Andy, for example. He has quite a high average. Okay, so you'd expect him, just based on the average alone, to be running slower than pretty much everyone else. But if you look at all of the times in this table, Andy actually has the shortest sprint time. So therefore, he has run the fastest 60 meter. All right, so that's one thing that's not being accounted for just by strictly looking at the average, it is trend. So what's something else that could be taking place here? Well, the averages do not account for situations where the average is being impacted by, let's say, an off value, okay? So let's say somebody ran a really terrible or a really poor sprint um, because they had a muscle pull or something like that, okay? Or for any particular reason. Right, so anything that happens out of the ordinary, which will bring down the time, or in this case, send the time up in the average by potentially quite a lot, right? So it might be a bit misleading. Okay, so here we have um, somebody like Stacy, you know, one, one minute she's running 9.6 seconds, then she goes up to 11.2, then 9.4, then 11.0. So not only is it possible that these 11 second runs were due to, I don't know, a muscle pull or something onto what? It could also mean that she's just being inconsistent, right? So the average is not showing or is not accounting for consistency, right? So we don't have the trend. We don't, we don't see the element of the trend, right? In the average, we don't see whether, whether the times are consistent between sprints by looking at the average. And we also can't account for perhaps a, a runner having um, a bad race here or there for some, some reason that won't normally happen, right? So those are the three main reasons why an average would not be ideal here for picking somebody to represent the school, one of these runners to represent the school in the 60 meter sprint race. So based on all of that, I would actually go with Andy, all right? Which might seem crazy because Andy has the highest average, but he has been improving. Look at it, his trend in terms of his running time, it's been coming down, right? 
from 15 to 12.9 to 12.5 to 10.5 to 9.1. So he has the greatest improvement if you look at the first to the fifth sprint. And further to that, he also has the lowest sprint time or the fastest sprint time, right, of all of the uh, potential candidates for this race. Even though his average is not the best, he has had the most improvement and ultimately he has run the fastest 60 meter sprint. So therefore I would pick him. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of our SEA specimen paper. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed the videos. I hope that they were helpful and are helpful and will continue to be helpful to you as you approach um, your SEA exam on June the 10th. So you may encounter questions that are similar to these. You can come back, look at these videos, and you'll have an idea of what approach to take when you're doing these questions. And that's in addition to all of our previous videos, right? We have something like 74 complete um, episodes of C results with Mark Yearly and creative writing that you can use and access and watch as many times as you want. And those videos have student participation in it and students would share a lot of the same misconceptions about certain topics as, that you may have, right? So that's very helpful in that light. And of course, we are not done, right? With this SEA specimen paper series, you can look forward to Miss Nyla. She'll be on very soon. I don't know what day as yet, but she'll be going through the ELA specimen paper, um, just like I did and in, in broken up into various episodes. And hopefully we'll get that done in time for the exam. Thank you again so much. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this video, like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and get the word out there that C Results is here to help and to support our nation's children who are sitting the SEA exam. All right, so take care. Do have a good evening. Assalamu alaikum.